Welcome back to Just Giants with Grump and the Cranky Fan, the best damn podcast for the best damn football team. I am your host, the Football Grump. With me, as always, is Mike, the Cranky Fan, and with me for this very special week of Senior Bowl Week in Mobile, Alabama, are the Talking Giants dudes, Justin Pennick, all the way to my right, and then in the middle, Bobby Skinner. We are... It's our last day in Mobile, and the Cranky Fan is joining us from afar in New York. Yeah, Justin asked me for the intro to the Talking Giants pod, and I picked my homes in Alabama by Alabama, mm-hmm. and it actually had me a little emotional. I was like, my home is in Alabama. Like, <laughs> I, I love it down here, and I'm, I'm very sad to leave. Well, well, I have a counterpoint because I hate Alabama. I hate the people of Alabama. I hate anybody from the University of Alabama or Auburn <laughs> to the point that – uh, Grump, you know my friend Jeff, when Big Gator, you know, co-tailgate guy with me, gets yep. married. And as DJ plays Sweet Home Alabama in the middle of the wedding, and I go off on a tirade to him, the wife, the DJ, was not pretty. So I, I'm i sure Mobile is nice. I'm sure the people down there are great, but I just had this thing against Alabama. Next to Georgia, it's my least favorite state. Mm. Wow. So tough, tough indeed. <laughs> uh, those college. Well, let's uh, talk about Alabama for an hour. So, <laughs> yeah, really. So, well, before we, so, what do you love so much about New York? Are you just at a Knicks game? Look at all your gear. It's not Alabama. Hey, tonight, the Knicks winning is the secondary story. I got to experience going to a Knicks game with snacks, and yeah. that was that was something else. I mean, snacks is a guy. He's a lovable lug if he's on your side. You know, there's 20 people around us. 19 of them are his best friend after five minutes. And there's that one guy that isn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. So fortunately, that one guy didn't get into any trouble with him tonight. But uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I highly recommend going to, uh, you know, a non-giant game with snacks. You know, if it's a giant game, he usually has to stay home and sequester himself. But for something like the Knicks, it's a good time. There have been people that have said, I want to sit next to snacks for a giant game. And I'm like, you do not want to sit next to snacks for a giant game. You do not want to do that. I've considered asking him to come to a Devils Rangers game with me, no. and then immediately threw that idea in the garden. No, I, I attended. I have attended two sporting events with snacks, and one was enough. Yeah, love him though. <laughs> um, He's fine. Today was actually pretty good. You know, we only had a couple of beers. He was fine, and it was, uh, you know. But of course, if we would have blown that game tonight, I'm sure it would have been oh, yeah. carnage everywhere. So different story. Good. <laughs> carnage. Mm-hmm. Well, we're down. We're down here. There's a little less carnage going on. It's not. Somebody asked me. Uh, Joseph Clark asked me on Twitter uh, if if Mobile is like a cool, fun college town. No, no, no. It's, it's not. All chain restaurants. Like, it, but Ooh. if you do like chain restaurants, there's five of all of your favorite. Mobile, the city, like, which is very much like 20, 25 minutes away from where the Senior Bowl is at the stadium by on on that college campus. But that that city seems like it's got a bunch of cool little places, restaurants, stuff like that. It's got some charm to it. It's a military military town, right? Yes, yes. Actually, we met met somebody down here that's in the Coast Guard. Yes, um, and had moved down here. I think like a couple years ago. He said, Um, "Well, the question America wants to know is: Have you been to Waffle House? And if so, what did you each order?" Holy, we went to Waffle House, man, and. we, we came down here with a producer this time. So I want to talk a little bit about like the senior bowl and just like how this stuff works. Like yeah. there is to get all like clips onto Twitter and stuff like you think like, oh, yeah, you go to the senior bowl and then you like pick up your phone, hit record and then upload to Twitter and you've got yourself a clip there. It's practice like they're there to practice. They don't care about people in the stands. So like in the time it takes, like you've missed four reps doing that and like then you have to go on a show and talk about it's like, well, I was uploading clips all day. So we had a producer down here with us um, and that super helped. I mean, we had a ton of camera work going on. Justin was busting his ass way up high in the sky and cutting up clips between practice and stuff like that. But the producer Jeff had never been to a Waffle House and was a little apprehensive yeah. to go. And it was immediately an awkward experience. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I crank. I said, she I, said, how are you all doing? Well, and I was like, how are you doing tonight? And she goes, she almost cried. She's like, I just want this month to be. Over. There was three hours left in the month. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, wait, isn't today February 1st? That's not a good sign. Today's <laughs> February 2nd. This, it was January 31st, oh. like 10 o'clock. Yeah. Um, oh, it, everything God. was weird. It, um, I love, I love the Waffle House though. 
It's the, a, it's a. I would have been upset if we didn't stop. That. I have a religious oh. attachment to the Waffle House. Just uh, uh, like my, I live my life in stages of oh, when's the next time I'm going to be in an area by a Waffle House? So I'm going to Daytona, Florida, in two weeks, which I guess I'll be by a Waffle House. Yeah, I think there's one near the track. You will definitely be Fantastic. one off of I ninety five, I ninety five, and US ninety two. There's a nice one right there. And then after that, I'll and then I would have to wait until. May Memorial Day weekend, Charlotte, North Carolina. So my, I live my life in between. When's the next time I'm going to a Waffle House? But, Waffle House. but you mentioned Jeff and bringing a producer. Uh, we didn't really, you know, talk about this on Talking Giants, and I like how this is a little bit more of like a relaxed show. This year, just from a content perspective, I, I, I really, I loved it. I loved it, and also like the the stuff that we're going to continue to put out as kind of the days and maybe even the weeks go by i don't want it to be weeks because this stuff will become irrelevant very very quickly and very shortly but the amount of clips i was able to get and and kind of nobody else was taping where i was taping and i guess this it kind of stems from the lenses that you have on certain cameras like i have a i have a canon kind of handheld camera that zooms in way more than you think a regular handheld camera would and i know like people like bobby i guess you know they, like people don't care about like these details but i just i freaking just love this stuff um so we had a, i had a regular canon handheld camera I would capture some good plays. I would capture O line, D line, one v one. I would like make a mental note of, oh, this guy had a good rep. This guy had a good rep. I would take the SD card out, throw it on my Mac. I did not have that Mac computer last year, and then I would clip it up on Premiere. And if I really had the time, I would throw it in real, real format, 1080 by 1920. Throw it in real format, keyframe it all up, especially wide receiver DBs. That'd be so fun to capture. Then boom, post immediately. And I th- really do think the clips that we were putting out the quality of the clips and then also key framing following zooming in on guys and just getting everything i think day two and day three it was better than what everybody else was was putting out and that i i got so freaking stoked and pumped up when we were able to do that and that was really fun i'm going to speak for all of you know giants nation out there that you guys are doing the lord's work and uh it's been fantastic coverage to watch you know i i wish i could be there i've been getting crushed with work i I actually had to be in Philadelphia yesterday. I'll talk about that story in a minute. But oh. uh, no, it's been it's been fantastic. Now, last year, didn't you guys have an issue where they shut you guys down from posting anything? No, that was training was that camp. But day three, okay. day three, they canceled pra- or they, they didn't let media in the practice because of rain, and it just didn't rain. Right. It never rained. Yeah, so it rained all day, day two, and we were miserable in that. And that <laughs> that was, I mean, like if it rained the way it did day two last year everything you just described would not have been possible. No, you couldn't have your laptop out. Cause it was at for, we were like soaked at one point. Yeah. Cause I think I went home in between or went back to the hotel between practices changed and came back. And I think snacks did too. Yeah. Um, so the laptop, everything you said about the laptop, that's out the window, out the, the window, amount of for sure. rain that was happening. And then the third day, there was supposed to be some crazy storm that never happened, but just in case they moved the practice inside and that was restricted to, PFF. Yeah, and that was and that was last year, but this year the everything besides, works out. Besides day one just being hot as balls, but still, I mean, I will take no rain over anything else that you throw at me. Yeah, no rain. Oh yeah. Um. So like I started to say before, um, I had to run down to Philly last night for a work event, and that place again. I just was ripping on Alabama for a minute. Alabama is Shangri La compared to Philly. You know, we all know that's a disgusting shithole of a city, but. The second I got off the train, it's everything is green. They're selling shirts everywhere, you know, conference champs, blah, blah, blah. But on the thing that topped it for me on the subway, like on the top of the subway, it says Super Bowl champs, Philadelphia Eagles. Mm. They're so obnoxious and they're so arrogant. Or I just stepped into a time warp into next Monday, but they are, they're all in, they're all obnoxious. And I just, I was there for five hours and it was six hours too long for me. It's awful. <laughs> I, um, so y- you told me that yesterday we were, we were texting a little bit and I think we had a difference of opinion. We both want them to lose. I want them to lose the exact same way that the Bengals lost. That's, I want them to lose on like a somewhat controversial call. That's mm-hmm. not really controversial. That's close. And I want them to like explode over that. Seattle moment did. For decades. You don't like Seattle. No, not me. I want them to lose like TCU did. I want them to lose, you know, ninety-seven nothing. I, I like pain. I like. I think the city will like burn more. 
the city will burn more if Grump's reality happens. I, I don't even. I'm, I want to take it a step further than Grump, where you're like, you want a controversial call that's not controversial. I want like the Ram Saints pass interference type <laughs> of call. Like, I wanted to actually screw them over where they have every right, and we could still be like, sorry, you still lost the Super Bowl. <laughs> the city will burn. <laughs> Good. I think I want a loss like the Seattle loss, where they just throw on first and goal from the one and just have something incredibly stupid. Oh, that that's a, would that's be a Philly good. The city would burn. That's a Philly. That's a Philly outcome is doing just something boneheaded. The city will burn. Beside, I, if they get blown out, I I don't think people. Will, all right, no. they got blown out. So I, so Cran- I do not want Cranky's reality to happen. <laughs> okay. Um, I should go to Philly for that and just watch. Watch the city burn. Oh, go sit next Xfinity Live. Oh, oh just sit there and watch. <laughs> yeah, like the guy fiddled when Rome burned. That type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was even thinking that who played a fiddle when Rome was burning. It was the fiddle during when Titanic. Those are violin. Oh, oh, those guys. Yeah. Oh, violin. <laughs> Gentlemen, it was an honor to play football with you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so we had like, I I, I want to bring this up just because I thought it was cool. Um, it was very early in the morning. Uh, taking my flight down here. And I, I actually had like a fairly direct flight. Like last year I flew into Pensacola, which is what you guys did. Yeah. And then we drove um, into Mobile. I got a connecting flight from Newark to Atlanta to Mobile. And it was like super early in the morning on Monday. And I'm like, looking at this guy, when I get on the plane, I'm like, that kind of, was that coach? Like, no, that doesn't make any sense. And then I'm like, I'm sitting there with this information for my whole first flight to Atlanta. Get there, I race over to my terminal, and it's delayed by like 20 minutes. Not a big delay. The plane's just not ready yet, or whatever. That's and good I, for Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I see that guy off the plane that come over to now my terminal, and then I see another dude, and it looks exactly like Mike Kafka, except now he doesn't have the playoff beard anymore. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, ah, shit, is that him? And then. Then I see the bags all have Giants logos on. I'm like, that has to be. It can't not be. But it's also super early in the morning. I have any fucking coffee. I think I'm losing my mind. Mm-hmm. So I took discreet pictures of both of them. And I sent them to Bobby. <laughs> and I sent them to you. And I was like, is this my Kafka? And I got two confirmed yeses. And I see Dave's kind of like circling around, getting antsy. He separates from the pack of guys for just a second. And he's walking towards me. And I'm like, oh. Uh. So I was just like, hey, um, excuse me. Uh, is your name Brian? He's like, yes. I was like, and I, I just shook his hand. I congratulated him on a good season, and I told him I wouldn't bother him for the rest of the flight, or, or for what I just wasn't going to bother him. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I shook his hand. I did not approach my Kafka. He was sitting in a seat just by himself. I don't know if I would want to approach so, Kafka. Yeah. <laughs> but my cat. The opposite. Should, Frank, my should he have went, uh, went and said he was going to the Mobile with the Talking Giants guys, or no? I would have took it a step further because my favorite movie is Glengarry Glen Ross and your always be closing. I would have whipped out the talking giants and the just giant stickers, gave it to him, try to book him on a show next week. But that's just Add him on the back and just put the stickers on the back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's like, a, yeah, that, that, I a think what's the difference in our personalities is I'm just kind of like here enjoying the ride of life. And <laughs> you're, you're, you're better at just like talking to people. I think. Always um, be closing A I D A. But I mean, like, I, I'm somewhat worried about like the the assistants going on interviews and whatever. So I I was kind of I don't know. I guess it's stupid to be like a little bit happy that Kafka was with him. I was super happy to see Wink Martindale out on the field and kind of hanging out with them for a little bit as well. Uh, at least at one point, he was standing with Joe Shane, who we also ran into. We did, yeah. But I, but I will say, um, I, I, in this, in this same light of seeing Wink Martindale on the field, and then seeing Wink Martindale spend a lot of time with Joe Shane, this, this, this could mean nothing. But for my brain, my fan brain, I liked how much time Wink Martindale and Joe Shane were spending together, and I liked how often Joe Shane was smiling in the same vicinity as Wink Martindale. Yeah. Now you could also turn that to. There was a lot of time where Wink Martindale was not with Joe Shane, and Wink Martindale was spending just so much time. On the field, I don't even. I don't even know if we. I didn't look for Mike Kafka. I didn't see him out there. At all. I didn't. See I think him. Kafka and Dable were just in the stands on uh, on yeah. the coaching yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, because we didn't see Dable really at all. So no. if you're if are you're they a part of the coaching staff there, or no, was they that, weren't part of the staff. No. Of- no, 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 no. Patrick Graham was the head was one of the head coaches though, right? 
So if you're a pessimist, you can turn it around and say, well, Wink Martindale was spending too much time out there. Maybe he's yeah. spending too much time out there freezing. But the pessimist. But he but was with Jerome Henderson too, a bunch. The optimist in me says he was out there a lot, wearing, you know, obviously wearing Giants gear, spending time with Joe Shane, spending time with Jerome Henderson. He's here, which makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah, that that's the take I would have. Because to me, if I was really concerned, I'd be like, where is he? Is he studying for his interview right. with another with another team or something? And you know, I know this is now we're in a post COVID world where you can do your first interview, you know, through Zoom and stuff, and then they fly you in or whatever. But the more he's out there, the more he's representing the Giants and doing official Giant functions, that tells me he's at least invested in this job until, unless until he leaves. So I, I, I take that as a positive. Yeah. So what do you want to know? We've been here and we've been blabbering on about like players for the last three days. What do you, what do you, what do you want to know that we saw? Well, I mean, obviously the two things I care about the most are, you know, what you see and how it impacts the Giants and how are my Gators doing out there. So I guess let's do a real quick Gator recap. Um, the two guys out there, I guess, are Cyrus Torrance and uh, Richie Goriage. How, how did they both look so far? Well, I'm glad we and do they, that do you see either of them fitting into our plane at all? Oh, Cyrus Torrance, definitely. Uh, I did a video on him, Crank. You see how strong he is, and he has like actual power, man. Like once he anchors down, he, he's not being moved. Um, I and I, I'd like to get your opinion on this because you watch him every game. I do worry a little bit about his foot speed, and you guys were so run heavy and play action and like full slide protections where he was not put on pat and on island so much. But when he mm -hmm. was, like he had obviously some struggles versus Jalen Carter, who's just a different animal. And I, I was looking right. at some of his numbers. Was it the Texas A&M game that he might have struggled to? Like, how do you feel about him, like, pass pro on an island? Well, that's the thing with, with the Gators. It was very tough because, you know, with Anthony Richardson, he's always rolling out. He's never just sitting back in the pocket for four or five seconds looking to throw. He's always on the move. And so he had – I don't know how many times he was sacked this year. Not many times. So that was a combination of, you know, pass blocking, but more him. So um, he's definitely – he specializes in, in run blocking for sure. That was his – you know, if you look at the um, the Napier offenses, even Louisiana, very, very run heavy. Um, and, you know, that was the question mark when he when he transferred. It's like, okay, well, can he – can this translate to the SEC? And he was fantastic in the SEC. So, you know, I – for what we do, I think he might be a pretty decent fit again because you see Daniel Jones is always, you know – they have him rolling out and stuff also. Yeah. So it's not like he's not a guy who's a statue back there when he needs his five, six seconds. Yeah, it is kind of like uh, it, it doesn't have to be a move offense with Daniel Jones, obviously, but like he has that ability and is good at it. So I, I think it can work. Um, I, I liked Osiris Torrance. You know, even I was checking him out just when Billy Napier took him from Louisiana Lafayette and brought him over to Florida. I was already kind of checking him out. So, uh, Rich Goriage, I, I don't know, Rich man. Goriage, yeah. Goriage, mm -hmm. <laughs> Goriage. Um, he was yeah. kind of—I hate to say it—but kind of just irrelevant. Where it's like he wasn't doing anything great and wasn't horrible. Where like he was getting picked on or anything, but it was just kind of like I don't know what this guy. Like if this guy, maybe he, maybe like he's kind of like a maybe he's a backup at the next level so type guy. Why don't you tell us what you saw in him from Florida, from your perspective? Same. Same type of thing. Again, he benefited from the fact that, you know, Anthony Richardson's a guy who rolls to his right all the time. He rolls a lot. So um, the offensive line as a whole, you know, over the last two years was pretty decent. Um, and again, you know, having Emory Jones the year before and having Anthony Richardson, two guys very mobile who are very active, you know, they're not statues at all. So, um, you know, it's tough to really do an evaluation for pass blocking for, for those five guys that they had. So, I mean, he was – steady. I mean, he never stood out to me as fantastic. You know, I think he only allowed one sack last year at Florida. But again, a lot of that's kind of the product of the system more than him being fantastic. So he, here's my, my problem is he didn't stick out at all. I think he did have some bad reps. This edge rusher group down here, the whole defensive line group down here is pretty unimpressive. Yeah. So to have like no standout oh. reps against like these guys, that's, that's kind of tough for me. I, I, to me, he was like we didn't even bother trying to figure out how to say his name until we talked to you. I thought it was garage. garage. No, it's, it's not garage. Goriage. 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 It's the more French version. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So those were your two Florida guys. Is there what else do you want to know? 
I guess, you know, kind of taking this up and down, because I'm really looking at this. You guys are looking at prospects, just how they look and everything. And I'm looking at this through the Giants lens, obviously. So I was kind of thinking, you know, if there was one guy in offense and one guy in defense that you felt would be a perfect fit for this Giants team, you know, not necessarily, well, we need a wide receiver. So that's the guy I'm interested in the most. But like, who out there is one guy on each side? You're like, I want that guy on this team next year and, and going forward. Do you want to go down the line? Yeah. 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 Justin, you go first. Are you going to say, are you going to talk about John Michael Schmitz? You can pick, no, you, you pick John whoever Michael you Schmitz. want. All right. Then I'm going to pick John Michael Schmitz and I'll have Bobby kind of just uh, expand upon it. But I mean, this Giants team, they need interior offensive line help. They obviously need wide receiver help. I would say one of my big things from just the senior bowl with the wide receivers. There are a lot of fun wide receivers. There are some wide receivers that had better weeks than we thought. There are some wide receivers that had worse weeks than we thought. The biggest thing for me leaving the senior bowl is I really thought that I was going to have a wide receiver that I was going to hold on tight to in terms of like first, second, third round. Mm -hmm. I'm not leaving the senior bowl thinking I'm holding on to this one wide receiver or two wide receivers so close that I want to get fully invested in. Yeah. There's still a lot of time left, obviously, in draft prep and even some of these senior bowl guys. We got to go back and we got to watch more. Or we just have to watch more of them in general. I really wanted to leave the senior bowl week from as a Giants fan. <laughs> holding a wide receiver close to my chest and rooting for him to become a New York Giant. I am not leaving the Senior Bowl like that. I'm enticed by a lot of them, though. But John Michael Schmitz well, is... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Crank. No, I was say, following up on that, I guess, how much do you see from the Senior Bowl impacts your decisions as opposed to watching film later and the combine and all these different things? Is this, you know, 50% of what your thought process is is, is kind of formulated by these this week or is it just like gets me curious for later on? I think it's a player by player basis. Yeah, right? it really depends, right? Because if it's a small school guy, how he does here in practice against the bigger school guys is going to be weighed a little bit more for me than film in certain respects, mm -hmm. right? And also kind of position dependent. Like linebackers down here, it's really hard to get any judge at all. And that's a position that they really do need is a linebacker. Right. It's just the drills that you see, like it, it doesn't really show you what you need to see from a linebacker, even in team things where they can kind of they can just kind of tee off. What, what I'll say is I think you can drop your stock more than you can really rise your stock here. Um, like John Michael mm -hmm. Smith raises rose his stock here by Justin, right. but like he was already somebody that was, you know, viewed pretty well. Uh, Rasheed Rice, the wide receiver at SMU, who we were hoping was going to be like that star guy down here. I yeah. think his stock dropped because it's like there was questions of him mm -hmm. dealing with press coming in. He struggled with press coming out. Um, and and then like you said, I think the guys who can raise their you know stock are the small school guys like Cody Mock out of North Dakota State. So I, I, on offense, I'll go Osiris Thorns. Uh, you know, we if there was one position group on the off offense that really stood out, it was the offensive line. So I, I'll go Osiris Thorns out of Florida. Like we need interior offensive line help. I do not want to half ass it. You know, we have Joe Shane, and I believe in Joe Shane, but if there's one thing the Bills have done pretty damn bad at the last five years is building up that offensive line. I want to take the offensive mm -hmm. line serious. Yeah, and I guess I could continue on the offensive line and say Cody Mock. I think he would be a fan favorite. Yeah. He would be fun. And I do think he will be good at the NFL. But instead of doing that, I'll go Payne Durham. We, we talk a little bit about tight end and needing one. I think Daniel Bellinger is a well-rounded tight end. He can block, he can receive, he can get yards after the catch, he can move. Um, and that allows us to either get a more receiving tight end and make him kind of more the blocker and then the chain mover, or get a blocker chain mover tight end and allow him to be more of a receiver, not have to rely on Daniel Bellinger staying back and, and chipping before releasing or actually just staying in to block. And Payne Durham, man, like... He's not going to fly down the field at all, but like he gets good body position. He's going to be that guy that converts on third and five, even though he's got two guys around him. And he's also going to be that like New York Giants, like favorite highlight of Mark Bavaro carrying 11 guys down the field for 10 more yards. Oh, he, he and really the Giants fan is dying for that guy. Yeah. They, they want another one of those guys. Crank, I want to read you a DM. Okay. Uh, uh -oh. We were laughing at this earlier. So we've been talking about Payne Durham, obviously, a lot, you know, like, and mm -hmm. it's not a knock on Daniel Bellinger. It's just like, hey, we like, we're we, just reporting on what we see. Yeah. And, and it's like the Giants aren't in a position. They're, they're really in no position to like say, oh, we don't want anybody from this spot unless it's like a starting tackle or a mm -hmm. quarterback. 
Mm-hmm. Daniel Bellinger's father sent me a picture of the tight end of the week last year. Uh, so, hey, Bobby, do you think Payne Durham has a chance to be voted tight end of the week at the Senior Bowl like Daniel did last year? <laughs> did you know Daniel was in the Senior Bowl last year? You can tweet this trophy in a story if you'd like. So, Payne, our Payne Durham love has uh, Daniel Bellinger's uh, family feeling a little insecure. Mm. <laughs> I like to think of it as well, tight ends nowadays feel like they work in teams on some of the best teams, right? Like, oh, yeah. Two tight end stuff yeah. is huge. Like yeah, that's so, why I want Payne Durham is to work those two tight end stuff. And honestly, if, sure. if Payne Durham were the other guy, he would not be the stat guy over Daniel Bellinger. No. So I mean, no, there's no, no reason. For it. <laughs> I think that's just no. kind of funny. And maybe even moving to the defensive side of the ball too. And I'm gonna again, I'm gonna keep this vague, like I did with my thoughts on the wide receivers. Maybe part of the reason why some of these wide receivers weren't as fun as we thought that they were is because the corners were so good. Yeah. You know, and sometimes in draft prep. You get frustrated, you know, because I know Patrick Graham said, you know, heading into 2021 and that they wanted to play more man coverage. So then that draft prep season, we were looking for press man corners. We were looking for man coverage corners. Wake Martindale's hired. You know, you're definitely looking for press man corners. Where can we find those guys in the draft? And it seemed like this senior bowl, there were a lot of guys that were able to thrive in press man, in man coverage, and they have long arms, which those are like the two things that you want to look for. Um, for this giant system, press man, you know, and having that background, having that uh, good ability, and then just it seems to just work in the NFL that if you have arms that are longer than thirty inches, you may you're more than likely maybe going to be a good corner if you have arms longer than thirty inches. And you just look well, at what Wink Martindale and the Ravens have done. You know they they like they bring in the guys with the long arms. Yeah, Senior Bowl had a lot of those guys. Was Ringo yeah. down there? No, no, no. Ringo, no. Well, he's not a senior, is he? I thought he was an early commit junior. I'm not. I'm not. Exa- yeah, I think he is a junior. Tyreek Stevenson out of Miami. I'm gonna just skip ahead to me for the defensive guy. Tyreek Stevenson out of Miami. That corner, I really liked him. He was running routes for wide receivers at, at one point. Um, like I think he's someone hmm. who might rise a lot. But I think he might rise a lot anyways, just because people will start watching his film. Um, so Tyreek Stevenson out of Miami would be like the guy on defense I really want. I saw two comments. I posted a a reel of him this morning tracking him, and there were two, there were multiple comments saying, "Oh, but if you turn on his film at Miami, it's not very good." Well, Miami's not very good. Miami's not very good. <sighs> yeah, I'm kind of regretting the Mario Cristobal uh, experience a year in. The I other, want, the, the, I wonder if Miami plays maybe a little bit more. Do you know if they play more zone or man, or do you you know you got to you got to watch? So I wonder if what they did in Miami didn't match what his strengths are. That's what I'm wondering right now. I don't know. I don't watch Miami like that. Well, we'll see. I watched them like the first two weeks of the season. And then TBD. Down. We'll find out. I, I think is, the it Randy, other- is it Randy Shannon, their, their defense coordinator again? Didn't they bring him back? I don't think. No, I don't think so. I thought they brought him back for some reason. He runs a lot of. Run a we don't have an offensive so. coordinator yet, uh, so we're we're looking out for the, who that will be. Where is Randy Shannon? I think the weird thing about looking at film of number one corners, especially number one corners on bad teams, is He's with FSU. Ugh. Your friends. <laughs> yeah. The tough thing is when you're a shitty team and you have a really good lockdown corner, teams just don't throw at you. Mm. So your film work is like, well, he blanketed this guy, but who cares? Like, yep. I mean, mm. like you're not going to be a heavy stats dude. So, like, I think that might maybe be also Stevenson's case. I, I. Look, I liked a lot of the corners here. They're all very good. In, well, not they're all, but a lot of them are very good in press man coverage. I like Caillou Blue Kelly from Stanford. I know I already liked him before the college season even started this year, but he's the only man cover corner here that was very successful on a consistent basis that I don't think is going to get 100 million flags. And I think they were kind of nuts with the flags while we were down here, but it was like every play there were flags. Really? <laughs> To be fair, there were some legitimate muggings happening at breaking points, uh, at, at break points in the in the route. So, of all the guys, he was the least grabby, most successful man corner in my opinion. But also, there's Jamie Robinson from uh, FSU. I know you love him, right? Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> did, um, did you see? Don't even bring those guys up because I get flustered for a couple of seconds. <laughs> um, I get I really, I get that annoyed. I'm very serious. Grump knows. I mean, um, Ram Gano misses a 60 yard field goal. He won't let it go ever. 
You know what? Graham Gano should have made that kick uh, at the end of uh, at the end of the overtime against Washington. The, you know, for how often people praise Graham Gano, build a statue, wh- wh- whatever. I he should have made that. What was it? A fifty-five yarder? Mm-hmm. That should not have been a tie. A fifty-eight yarder. Don't care. Shouldn't have been a tie. <laughs> but Grump, how long was that one in Charlotte? Sixty-three. Oh, you, I will never forget that. One. Exactly. It, it probably it, yeah. he probably could have made it from seven. It seven. And he missed the fifty-eight right. yarder at home. I think mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I if I if memory serves, that one in Charlotte did have a bunch of extra room too. I don't think that one just scraped oh, yeah. the crossbar. People let people let Graham Gano get away with that. Mm-hmm. Zero tolerance team. here with me. That's yeah. my special teams analysis. Speaking of special teams, did you see anybody that was kind of like electric or something like we may consider? Like in a later round, or like in a, terms of special punt returner. Oh god, um, yeah. Nathaniel Dell was returning punts. And I think he was dropping punts day one. He though. was. So here's the thing, though he he returned so punts he'll fit at in. Houston. <laughs> he'll fit right in with the Giants. He's just, and he'd be short too. It's the same thing as Richie James. <laughs> but he returned punts at Houston. He returned one for a touchdown, I believe, this year, and I maybe even in 2021 too. He's a shifty dude, and that uh, other than that, I don't know if Tajay Spears was. Catching? Did you see that? For the I run? don't know, but I feel like he should be able he to. Should. There's a two lane running back that I think at one point teleported today. He very Kadarius Tony in his movement. Um, I don't know if you saw the clip or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if he's not returning punts, he's somebody I would immediately. I'd rather have him returning kicks than Gary Brightwell. Not that he's even been bad, but that's a low bar, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gary Brightwell. And uh, the punter was shooting to the twenty yard line. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else you want to know? No, I mean, again, the clips and everything you guys are doing is really great stuff. It's a lot, you know. Again, I wish I was down there with you, you know, helping out and watching everything. But it's like the next best thing for me. So you know, I know I speak for everybody and appreciating all the, the work you guys, the hard work you did, and uh, I know you guys have to put up a grump for four days, and that really is. You know the work of the Lord. So, congrats to you guys. And well, I, I'm good. gonna yeah. I'm gonna jump in because anything that I've done down here that was any good at all, I have to thank them for. For I would not be here if not for them. I wouldn't be in Alabama yeah. um, being able to do any of this stuff anyway. So, massive thanks to you guys. I, I always appreciate all the stuff that you guys do for us, and uh, it's always just yeah. fun, just hanging out. Even if I wasn't involved in doing any of the work, and I was just whatever. Still fun. Yeah. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, I think even, the last thirty minutes of the last practice today, we were just like up in the stands, like just fucking around. Yeah, yeah. We were like, I think we were scaring <laughs> some people around us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe there's a there's, and we appreciate we appreciate like even the watch parties and stuff. Those were great times, you know. You know, you know. Obviously, the Philly one was you know a little rough, but you know, just meeting so many of the people we've met, like through you know your show and through our show and through the tailgates and everything. It's a nice community we've got together so you know we really appreciate it yeah absolutely i I don't think i'm ever going to forget that first wash party with the minister that was just so much fun it was a tight enough game (sighs) but with enough confidence the whole group of people there were really i I don't know that was just so much fun that was special yeah it It, it was it was just a very very special you guys were in raw form too that was that was oh oh my voice was done halfway through the first quarter Bobby's yeeting was, shirts and hitting people in the face in the crowd after. And it's funny oh, because they scored over 30 points. When we scored the touchdown versus the Eagles, did I hit somebody in the face with the shirt? Because like, it's hard to see when you watch the replay of it. But there's, there's the you third. You were throwing third. fastballs. I know that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was letting all my anger out on you those You almost shirts. cleared it. There was a table with like 17 beer bottles on it. Nothing was finished. And it just flew over the top. You almost <laughs> cleared the whole table. Out. You would, you would have had that was to, almost a better bowling than, than Justin when that shot. Yeah, it was perfect. Ten dollar <laughs> beers. You would have owed him one hundred and seventy dollars worth of beers. I like that. <laughs> like a, my memory, the, sure my work. memory of the first game. My memory of the first game was, you know, you guys were behind us and we were watching on the TV, and then something happened. I just hear Justin yelling, "That's bullshit!" Like through all the mic, the uh, speakers and stuff. It was like, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, those were fun. Anything else before we go? Anybody? Have you seen Grump's new uh, new profile picture on Twitter? Oh yeah, the, the the benefit of having producer Jeff is he took great headshots of all of us. He's so. going big time on us. Yeah, I got oh, a, I got a, let's take a look time, uh, profile picture. He's going to he's going to it's going to be I, I Grump Grump in a couple months. Yeah, it's <laughs> Grump, so I don't have to see it, so. I'm muted for. 
Yeah, it's a pain <laughs> in the ass. Let's take a look here and see what we got. The the profile picture I was working with was from the 2018 draft, like maybe 35 oh. minutes before we drafted Saquon Barkley. So, so two it was comments. Time for- okay. One is Under Armour sponsoring that. Mm. Oh, I didn't yeah. know you posted two. the picture. I thought it was just a new picture. No, I, no, I put it's it a profile one. picture. And two, uh, uh, what's with the wrinkles, Grump? Those are smile lines. I'm actually smiling. I'm so off brand in that picture. I, yeah, for someone who's got the wrinkles, but they, they only really show up when I'm like squinting because I'm laughing or something. Mm. The irony of you smiling being the Grump is pretty amazing. Yeah, I know. It's I, you know, I've 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 thought the same thing. People are gonna the football grow. Here's what's gonna. Whenever I search your name, I'm used to like the purple popping up, and like that's the profile to click. So it's gonna take me about a month to get used to that. Yeah. It's gonna take me like a month. I'm because I'm gonna wake up and forget that it happened. So part of part of my whole, I learned this from John Boy, my my boss. He rarely changes his profile picture. And I remember him saying a couple years ago, like never never change it, never change it because the second that you change it, like then that your audience gets like thrown off. Now he said that once and he's definitely changed it since then. So I don't know if I'm ever going to change my giants training camp, me holding a microphone profile picture from 2019. So actually uh, Tom from MySpace made that actual, I'm not, this isn't a joke. Tom from MySpace, who's had the same profile picture since like 2001 Mm -hmm. said the exact same thing. It's like, you will always know immediately that it's me. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of true. I don't give a shit though. Yeah, oh, people get used to. Uh, I've changed mine a few times. Yeah, this is me. I, I just can't describe me anymore. And when we were watching the 49er game, the cranky wife was in the exact same pose before the end of the Niner game. I took a snapshot. I have a side by side of me and her, and it's just like, yeah, we're married. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else? Um, I'm trying to th- I had a great I th- time. I think that's it. We've been having a great time. We did a lot of work, and we're going to go back and have a lot more work to do. That's that's the talking Giants, Giant, just Giants podcast way. Yeah. So, I mean, we are going to be back. Are we going to record Monday, Crank? Yeah. For sure. Tuesday episode. So we'll be back to our regular once a week schedule going forward. There will be a bunch of supplemental draft content that we're going to do uh, going forward. But the usual stuff here, follow us on Twitter at football underscore grump at the cranky fan. And uh, of course the show is on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google play, et cetera. And of course on YouTube uh, where it's best viewed, where you can see all of our faces and you can see that these guys are not just on the phone. They're actually here with me. Last mm-hmm. thing real quick, Bobby, uh, Nick's nets on Monday. Any thoughts? Uh, I'm, I'll be honest. I little worried that the, Knicks will beat the Nets for the first time in the 1,217 days I think we're at right now. Mm. Yeah, see, when I tee him up, you just hit him 380 yards, so good job by you. <laughs> it's, it is weird. No matter how miserable the Nets are, it's like Knicks fans have not been able to talk the shit because you can't even just no. get one. Like if you, if the day that that streak is broken, it's, it's over three years now, it's going to be horrible for us. But it's just like it, it can that day. It's like it's just like we keep keep on like extending our our life our lifespan. Is that kind of like the strange thing thing about it? Huh? Yeah. And I and it's I, I'm the same I'm, like the Eagles. I'm back to just being a miserable Nets fan. By the way, like I had two years of like let's go, let's win championships. This pat now there's still like two percent of me that still believes this team could maybe go there if they make a, a move within the next week. Um. But I am I am back to I'm just as miserable with the Nets as when they went twelve and seventy back in two thousand ten. Mm. And and the crazy thing with this long losing streak to the Nets is I don't think they've beaten them one time with all you know with KD and uh, and Kyrie together. Oh yeah, we've had we've had like bona fide scrubs out there before. Like when we traded for Harden, Kyrie was out, mm-hmm. and we so we traded like half of our team that day and still won that game. Mm-hmm. Like last night uh, or last Saturday, you know, no KD and no problem. Kyrie goes off. So it's highly annoying. And as the thing is, every Nick fan will, they're going to say, oh, we're, we own New York, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, deep down, it's, it's killing most Nick fans. They, they're dying to, you know, get one over on them. So, oh, so. yeah. Yeah, definitely. The I mean, I do my best to not get into the, like when Nets fans try to be like, like this is, 
this is the Nets town. Like, shut up. Just talk about winning and losing. That's what we have. Just talk about winning and losing. But I do see some of the Knicks. Like, there was a Knicks page who was like, LeBron sat versus the Nets. He didn't sit versus the Knicks. That's how you know this is a Knicks that. town. I was like, that. that's that's a little bit of a reach. Like, it's, it's not that you much know, of a reach now. If LeBron loved the Garden so much, and you know he would have signed twice, he had two opportunities to come to Knicks, and he didn't. So I don't want to hear this LeBron love of the Garden. People forget the first team he met with in 2010 was the New Jersey Nets. Wow, that's they right. Just, I think well, he was, just wanted to like hang out with Jay Z for a couple hours. Who was a yeah, that was the five percent owner of the team. <laughs> that was before the Knicks PowerPoint presentation, which turned him off so badly that you know he ran to Miami. Yeah, what that was. All right, well, let's not revisit the 2010 LeBron free agency. Please, please. Uh, no. All right, everyone. We will see you next time. Until then, go Giants. Go Giants.